Smart homes are great, but they can be a real challenge when you have guests over. Lights that automatically turn on or off can be confusing if not frustrating for a guest. There are many ways to approach this. I'll show you how I've created an easy guest mode from my smart home using Home Assistant, including how it works and how to set it up yourself. I'll also show you additional ways that you can consider implementing a guest mode and why I decided against them, since what doesn't work for me may work just fine for you. If you're new here, my name is Michael Lane and this channel is all about how tech can make you more productive, especially through home automation with new videos every week. I've said several times before that there are four ways to control most everything in our smart home. Automations, apps, voice, and physical buttons or switches. The latter is key both for people living in your home and for your guests. That way, someone has the option to physically flip something on or off. But that still may not be enough. For example, an automation could turn a light on when motion is detected. A guest could then decide to turn the light off at the switch, but as they move again, the light comes back on. What do you do about this? Well, when it comes to a guest mode, there are two extreme ends of the spectrum. Give your guests access to control all or at least part of your smart home or shut everything down. The first option may make it easier for your guests to to coexist alongside your smart home. In this scenario, you could give them a tablet with a smart home dashboard displaying the devices and services you want your guests to have access to like smart lighting control. The second option means your guests don't have to adapt to anything. Few or no automations are running so they can operate like they would in any regular home. Before I show you which approach I'm taking, it's good to consider the different types of guests you may have in your home and how you may want to tailor the experience for each. There are at least two categories of guests that you want to consider. Daytime guests and overnight guests. A daytime guest is one who is visiting but not sleeping at your home, whereas an overnight guest is spending the night. In that case, you'll want to give special consideration for the room they are staying in, including any of its smart home devices or automations. Depending on your needs, you could even take a more granular approach by having a separate way of going about this for family visiting versus a babysitter who is watching your kids for the evening. My approach to guest mode is somewhat of a hybrid. In a single tap, I can deactivate many automations automations at once when guests are over, and then bring them all back with one more tap. Examples of automations that you might want to disable include those related to lights or ceiling fans turning on or off, or window shades opening and closing. You may also want to consider automations that are related to smart locks, thermostats, and robot vacuums and mops. In addition to disabling certain automations, I also give my guests access to a wall-mounted tablet running a home assistant dashboard. I'll go through each of these. In my experience, house guests are not familiar with smart home technology. When we have people over, we don't want them spending time learning how to exist in our home or stressing over how things as simple as lights are supposed to work. For that reason, I have the option to disable specific automations from running by tapping one button on a home assistant dashboard or from a physical wireless button. Before I continue, I want to briefly share some cool smart home sensors that I use from today's sponsor, Third Reality. A water leak sensor has the potential to help you avoid thousands of dollars in repairs from a leak in your home. I was in this exact situation when a flood began in our basement and a water leak sensor allowed me to take immediate action. The third reality water leak sensor connects to your smart home using Zigbee and operates wirelessly so you can easily place it near a refrigerator, dishwasher, sink, toilet, water heater, washing machine, or any other flat surface. It's powered by two AAA batteries that are expected to last three years. When water is detected, it sounds a 120 decibel alarm and you can configure it to send you a push notification, email, email or broadcast an announcement over your smart speakers. Another practical sensor for your smart home is a vibration sensor. The third reality vibration sensor also connects to your smart home using Zigbee and operates wirelessly on two AAA batteries, expected to last around one year. You can adjust its sensitivity and it features a 110 decibel siren. You can use this to monitor doors, windows, mailboxes, jewelry storage, and a bunch more. I'm using a vibration sensor to alert me when the dryer stopped running so I know when it's time to fold the laundry. It's just such a convenient and helpful home automation. See the link in the description if you want to check these out and thanks to Third Reality for supporting the channel. To disable automations, I created a toggle helper, also called an input boolean, called guest mode. An input boolean is just a virtual switch that has either an on or an off state. Then I created a condition in certain automations that this toggle helper must be switched off for the automation to run. If the toggle helper is flipped on because guests are over, then the automation will not run. To create this in Home Assistant, go to settings, device, and services, helpers, create helper, select toggle, give it a name like guest mode, choose an icon if you'd like, 
and then click Create. To add this to your automations, go to Settings, Devices and Services, open the automation you'd like to disable during guest mode, click Add Condition under the And If section, choose Entity, then State, and then search for and select Guest Mode or whatever you named your Toggle Helper. Select Off from the State dropdown and save the automation. Remember that conditions are processed in the order they are listed. So if you have multiple conditions and the first one fails, it will not proceed to evaluate the other conditions. The automation just stops from being fully executed. Once you've got the input boolean created and added to an automation, you'll want it to wait to quickly flip this toggle helper on and off when guests arrive and leave. One option is to add a button to your Home Assistant dashboard. To do this, click the pencil icon in the upper right to edit your dashboard. Click the plus icon to add a new card. Search for an entity card. I'm using the mushroom entity card purely for aesthetic reasons, but you can just use the stock button card. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to learn more about my mushroom dashboard. From the card, search for your entity and select it. Then under tap behavior, choose perform action, select input boolean toggle for the action, and choose your toggle helper entity. Now, you can just tap the card on your dashboard to toggle the guest mode on and off in just a second. To make it even easier, you can add a physical wireless button that you can tap to enable or disable guest mode. I'm doing this with a third reality smart button. I'll leave a link to my overview of smart buttons for Home Assistant if you want to check it out. You could also achieve the same outcome with a smart switch on the wall that allows for multiple input types or has multiple buttons. For this, I created an automation with two triggers, single tap and double tap. I click the three dots next to each trigger and selected Edit ID and then gave each trigger a unique name. For the actions, I'm using the Choose function with a condition based on which trigger was triggered, a single tap or a double tap. For the first option, if a single tap was triggered, it turns on the input boolean for guest mode. Since the physical button provides no visual cue on the state of this input boolean, I added an additional action to send a notification to my phone and to announce over the smart speakers that guest mode was turned on. Guest mode is turned on but it will only play the announcement when we are not sleeping. For the second option, if a double tap was triggered, it turns off the input boolean for guest mode. Once again, it sends me a notification and plays an announcement that the guest mode was turned off. For the dashboard button that I showed earlier, you could instead choose to run a script that not only toggles the input boolean on or off, but also sends a notification and an announcement like I did for the physical button. However, I chose not to do this because unlike the physical button, the virtual button on the dashboard already has a color and a state indicator telling me if guest mode is on or off. In my view, you could just stop there and you'd have a functioning guest mode, but I also decided to give my guests access to a wall-mounted tablet that displays only specific parts of a Home Assistant dashboard. Since I'm using fully kiosk browser on an Android tablet, I'm able to configure the device to only display the Home Assistant dashboard whenever the device awakes or is turned on. Kiosk mode will also limit access to the sidebar and to the header. On the tablet, you could choose to display your entire main dashboard for controlling your home, only certain parts of your dashboard, or a separate dashboard just for guests. However you choose to approach this, I recommend creating a guest user account in Home Assistant that does not have administrator privileges and logging into the tablet using that guest account instead of your administrator account. I decided to restrict certain parts of our dashboard to only be visible to certain users. This way, for example, I can let the guest user account view lighting controls, but not security related ones. To do this, open your dashboard in Home Assistant and click the pencil icon in the upper right to edit the dashboard. Click the pencil icon on the section or card that you want to edit. Select Visibility, Add Condition, choose User, and then select the users that you want to have access and then click Save. With all that said, in my experience, these tablet dashboards for guests don't get a ton of use because it requires a behavior change for the guests. If nothing else, it's a fun little project and it may look cool to you on the wall, but maybe no one else. There are other ways that you could go about creating a guest mode in Home Assistant. You could create a dedicated user account for your guests and have them install the Home Assistant companion app on their phone. This probably only makes sense for long-term guests. Personally, I'm never looking to download an app just to visit someone else's house. Another option for iOS users is to make your home 
Home Assistant entities available at Apple Home by using the integration called HomeKit Bridge. Then you can invite those guests to join your Apple Home by clicking the plus icon, add people, and inviting a guest, and you can restrict their access to certain accessories or on a certain schedule. But again, I don't want my guests feel like they needed to access an app to control stuff. I want to hear from you. How are you managing your smart home with guests? And what tips do you have for others? Let me know down in the comments. And while you're there, give this video a like and consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.